How you doing, sister? I know you. I know you. Your, your daughter was shot down right in this community. This is my sister. When we learn to have that love for each other in our communities again, there will be no more black on black crime. Hey, brother, right there in the Eagles jacket. That's the Eagles jacket y'all hear? Hey, let me holler at you for a second, bro. Let me two minutes. Two minutes of your time. Two minutes of your life. Do you, let me ask you one question though. You believe in the Bible? You believe in you believe in the most you believe in Christ? So if Christ said gave me two minutes, could you give it to him? Well, we are followers of Christ, right? So listen, so if I said, what's your nationality, what would you say? I'm, I'm just a black man. That ain't a nationality. It's not. That's the color of your shoes. That's what I'm going to say, because I ain't got time for this right now. Yeah, but you a believer. I'm in the tribe. Well, take, I'm a, I want you to take this with you as you leave. Give me Deuteronomy 10 and 12. Why don't you take this with you as you leave? Because it's one thing to know that we're from the tribe of Judah, where we're from the tribe of Judah, it's one thing to understand that we're the Israelites. It's another thing to perform the duties of an Israelite, to perform the duties of God. I'm going to show you something real quick. Y'all brothers at the barbershop, y'all listen up if y'all got, got a couple of minutes. We ain't here for no static. What we're trying to do is raise up the 12 tribes of Israel. Right. Bring our people out of these low conditions that we are in and come back to what God called us to be. Let me show you what God calls you from the tribe of Judah. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. And now Israel. Now Israel, because y'all are Israelites. We're in a community full of Israelites. God says, now Israel, come on. What does the Lord thy God require of thee? What does God require of you once you know that you're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah? What does God require of you? How you doing, sister? I know you. I know you. Your, your daughter was shot down right in this community. Come and get this word. Your daughter was killed right here in this community. I know your face. It says, what does the Lord thy God require of you? But to fear the Lord thy God. To fear God. And y'all here, go tell the sister I said, come here. Go speak to her real quick. It says to fear God. Our duty as Israel is to fear God's judgments. Read on. To walk in all his ways uh -huh. and to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. To keep the commandments of the Lord. Hey, sister, pull over here real quick. A lot of brothers out here don't know your story. A lot of brothers out here don't understand the place that your, that your daughter had in this community as a young ball player coming up in, uh, in, in, in this side of town. But I do. I recognize your face. I know exactly who you are. Read it again. To keep the commandments of the Lord. Our job is to keep the commandments of the Lord. How you doing, sis? Come on over here. They don't know your story, but I know your face. I know your face. The Lord just sent you here. Brother, what's your nationality? Christian. Is that a nationality according to the Bible? No. It's the name of a what? What does it mean to be Christian? It means to be follower of Christ? I'm going to show you something. Give me, uh, what's that? 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 22, 21, 22. I'm going to show you something real quick. Christian is the denomination that, or Christianity is the is the religion that our people follow, right? So I got a question for you. 
in Christianity, do you actually learn your nationality? So if somebody said, how old are you? 23. If somebody said, what's your name again? Joshua, what is your nationality according to God? What would you say? Not sure. We've been taught to read the Bible, believe in Christ, but we have not been taught to do what the Bible says do. If you are a so-called black man, look at this sign right here. Look at this sign. Look on the back of the flyer. Flip it over. Where do you see yourself? When you look down there, you see the 12 tribes of Israel. Where do you see yourself at? Judah. You are an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. That's what God calls you. Now, your question should be is, how y'all know that? Give me that in Genesis chapter uh, Genesis chapter 49. I want to speak to the sister definitely. Her, her daughter was killed right here. Set up by her own people and murdered right here in this community. Read this real quick. Genesis chapter 49, verse 8. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. The Bible says, Judah, you are he whom your brethren shall praise. Now, you just, you just learned that you're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. It says, Judah, you are he whom your brethren shall praise. When you look down at the rest of the sign, these are Judah's brothers. Remember, in the Bible, you had Jacob, whose name was changed to what? He wrestled with an angel, and his name was changed to what? Israel. Then he had 12 sons, who became the sons or the patriots of the nation of Israel. That's where you get the 12 tribes of Israel from. How you doing, sis? Come out here. Come out here, side right here, sister. As I, as I deal with the brother real quick, as I deal with the brother real quick, I want, I, I want to, you remember me? You don't remember me. I look familiar. I was teaching in the Bible shop one time. I know your story. We was going to shoot the, we was going to shoot the interview. But real quick, I want to deal with the brother, show him how we know that he's from the tribe of Judah. How I know you're from the tribe of Judah. Read this again. Genesis chapter 49, verse 8. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall pray. It says Judah. Right here on the top of the sign, Judah, the American blacks, you are he whom your brethren are going to praise. Read. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemy. Who is the enemy to the so-called American black man? Don't be, and be real. Who is the enemy to the so-called American black man? Who is the enemy? Who is our enemy? Who did this to you? Who did this? Is this biblical? Is this is this what you're looking at? Is this biblical? If I said, Joshua, show me this in the Bible, could you show me? Yes. Could you show me this? Where at? No. This image, the image of what you see right here of slavery. If I said, show me that in the Bible, could you show me? I'm going to show you in a minute. Be patient with me, sister. One minute. Read on. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemy. It says Judah's hands are going to be in the neck of his enemy. If, it's, if your hands are in the neck of your enemy, that means you are in close proximity of each other, right? right. My hand can't, your hand can't be in my neck or my hand can't be in his neck if we're not close, right? We're going to be in close proximity of each other. Our hands shall be in the neck of our enemy. Read. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. And we're going to be struggling with our enemies. It says, our father's children shall bow down before thee, the rest of the 12 tribes of Israel. Why? Because Judah, in this land, our hands have always been in the neck of the so-called white man. Since the time we came here on slave ships, which is recorded in the Bible, we have been struggling, fighting, wrestling, and being oppressed by the same people. We are oppressed today. That's why they push us off into this part of the community. That's why they push us off into certain parts of all the communities scattered around us. We live in a certain designated area. Our hands have always been in the neck of our enemies. Read. I got it. Right. Judah right. is a liar's wealth. Uh -huh. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He crouched as a lion. Now, this is a parable, sis. This is a parable, brother. It says, Judah, he stooped down, he crouched as a lion. When do we stoop down? Because we've been fighting for freedom since the time we got here, right? When did we get when did we get so-called free? Never. There you go. We never got free. Right. But our sense of freedom came 1863, eight, between 1863 and 1865, when the Emancipation Proclamation was signed. We thought we was free. But we're not free. We're still slaves today. 
So it says that Judah, his brother, will bow down to him because we're going to bring the truth of this Bible to all the rest of our brothers who are Hispanic, who are of Native American descent, who are so-called Indians. They are of the 12 tribes of Israel, too. Those are our brothers. That's who Issachar is, the so-called Mexican. That's who Reuben and Gad is. Those are the northern kingdoms of the nation of Israel. We are brothers, but we got detached and lost from our nationality because of captivity. Read on real quick. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet. Because we are lawgivers now. How do we know that? Because we're bringing the laws back to you. We're bringing the laws. It's all, all across America, you're going to see the, the, the tribe of Judah mainly spreading this truth to the rest of our brothers and sisters on the earth that we are the chosen children of Israel, that we're not black, that our nationality is not a black American, that our nationality is what God called us in the Bible. we got to come back to that and learn to keep God's commandments, like the Sabbath day. Did you know that today is the Sabbath day? Yes. What are you supposed to do on the Sabbath day? Worship. Worship. Gather together, rest, no buying, no selling, no cooking, no cleaning. We should be coming together under the laws of God and keeping God's commandments. But we have been destroyed in such a low state, we don't know that no more. We've forgotten who we are. And there's nobody out there bringing us and putting us in the remembrance of who we are as a people, as God's chosen people. Go back to Deuteronomy 7 and verse 6. I want you to hang with me. Now, sister. Tell everybody your name. Come here. Let me tell everybody your name. Step right here. Step right here. Step right here. Adina Richardson. Tell us what happened to your daughter. She was murdered. How? By her, basically by her brother's own hands. So this sister's daughter suffered murder at the hands of her brother, her blood brother right here in this community. And they wonder why we come out and fight for our people, to show our people who we are. See, I know some of the things that you've been going through because you told me about them things. But I want to tell you, sis, today is your day. Today is your day to understand that everything that you went through and that are going through is because of us as a nation of people. We, we have not learned who we are as a nation of people. That's right. There's no love in our community. Right. Give me that in Zephaniah chapter 2. You know what I want? God, called, God gave us his commandments as his chosen people. When you look around, there's no other people on the earth suffering what we're suffering. Why is that? Why ain't nobody else suffering black on black crime? Is there such thing as China on China crime? What about white on white crime? Why that don't exist? Why is there such a thing as black on black crime? I'm going to show you why. Read what you got. Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1. Gather yourselves together. What did God say? Gather yourselves together. What? Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. God told us to gather together, O nation not desired. All across the earth, we're not desired. In our own homes, in our own communities, we don't desire each other. Right. You got blood that hate blood right here in our community. Give me that in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 1. Bring it up. Blood killing blood. We, you my brother. You understand that? Like, I ain't talking about just literally, but I mean literally. When we learn to come together under what God says, there will be no more black on black crime. That thing will cease to exist. Shalom Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. discussed in Mo Bible shop. This is what was being discussed. We are the children of Israel. B. 
For the Lord has a contra For the Lord has a controversy against against thee. Mm -hmm. For the Lord has a controversy with, against thee. With so God has a controversy against us. Why does God have a controversy against us? What you think? You go to church now. You're in church every Sunday. Every other Sunday. Sometimes. When mama tell you you gotta go. Okay. Why does God have a controversy against us? Because we broke his commandments. Remember in the Bible, you gotta remember, you gotta remember this, Joshua. God gave the commandments to who? Who are his people? The children of Israel. When did in the Old Testament when Moses brought them out of Egypt? Moses brought them out of Egypt and he gave them God's law, statutes, and commandments in the wilderness, right? Did we keep them? No, we didn't keep them. Now, because we didn't keep them, this is what happened to us. Because we didn't keep God's commandments, he said, if y'all don't keep my commandments, these curses are going to come upon me. We're going to read that. I want you to finish this video, Hosea 4 1 again. Hosea chapter 4, verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. God has a controversy against the inhabitants of the land. We are the inhabitants. All across the earth, we outnumber all people. Don't you know that, right? We outnumber all people. And I ain't talking about just black people. I'm talking about blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We the same people. We outnumber all people. Come on. Because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. There's no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. Now, the sister that just left, I know she left, she got emotional. Because her daughter was killed only a couple of years ago. You heard about that story? She, went, she was a ball player at Richland High School down here. Her old brother, her old brother set her up for a bag of weed. Her own brother had her murdered. That's why she's suffering. I see her all the time. She got this look in her face. They got a mural of her daughter painted on the barbershop wall down there that was being done. By the brother. He didn't have faith and he fell out too. He left. Never came in the truth. But he knew he was an Israelite. Her daughter was murdered right here in this community by her own brother. What God said, read it again. But by, by swearing and lying. Read up. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. God has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Read on. Because there is no truth. There's no what? No truth. And? No mercy. Uh-huh. No knowledge of God in the land. Now, you think that if her son had knowledge of God, if her son had the truth of the Bible, he would have said his sister? No. So we're missing something. Something is missing in our community. Let me show you what it is. Give me that. Give me the knowledge in Malachi. Give me Malachi real quick. Let me show you what's missing in our community because today, and you, how old did you say you was? 23. 23 years old, and you just learning that you're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. It is purposely done for us not to understand who we are. It is purposely done for us not to understand that we're God's chosen people. Read what you got. Malachi chapter 2, verse 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. It says the priest's lips should keep knowledge. Like our pastors, our elders that sit in the church, it says their lips are supposed to keep knowledge. Read. And they should seek the law at his mouth. And they're supposed to, we're supposed to seek the laws of God at the priest's mouth. You understand what, do you understand what I just read? You as a student in the church are supposed to seek the knowledge of God's laws from your pastor. In, the, in seeking God's laws, you're going to understand something, that you're an Israelite. You're going to understand that repentance is for Israel, that you're an Israelite. You read that in Malachi one more time. Malachi chapter 2 verse 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth. But because we haven't sought the law at God's mouth, we got, we got black or black crime. We got murder. We got brothers that don't know their nationality. Lost in the world. We think we understand the world, but we don't understand the world. Give me Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. We think we understand. When, we, if you, when you go back to the church, because I'm sure you will, unless you hear, unless the voice of God resonates with you right now, you're going to look at two things. You're going to look at the church for what it is, 
and what it's been for the last for the past few hundred years and you're going to weigh it against what you're hearing right now today because whether you understand it or not this is church we are the church the people are the church before the building right in the wilderness they didn't was there a physical building that moses brought the people to when he brought them out of uh, the land of egypt so when we read that in the book of acts what was the church go read that real quick acts chapter 7 verse 38 this is he that was in the church in the wilderness there was, was there an actual physical building that we read about in the old testament so what is he talking about the people the people of the church right. this right here what you're seeing right now this is church right. now give me that in uh isaiah read isaiah chapter 1 verse 3 the ox knoweth his owner and the ass his master's crib but israel but who but israel look on the back of our side or look at this sign right here but israel does not know my people does not consider you notice he said my people he said, read it again. Let's stress, let's stress that part. The ox nor this owner in the ass is master's crib. You from the country, right? You know you can take an ox or ox, it knows who feeds him. A donkey, you can take it how many? Five, ten miles away. What's gonna happen the next day? Where the donkey gonna be at? It's gonna be right back at home. They know how to get home. Read. But Israel! But the children of Israel, the people on that on that paper that you got in your hand. These people that you see out here right now that came on slave ships, whose forefathers and forebrothers came on slave ships, the children of Israel, come on, do not know. They don't know who they are. They don't know their homeland. They don't know God, their original language, their customs, their traditions. They don't know nothing about it. Read. My people. God says, them my people though. My people does not consider. They don't consider it. Why? A sinful nation. You say, ah, a sinful nation. We're in sin. Because today is the Sabbath day, right? Should we be purchasing, making purchases at the liquor store, the hair store, the regular store, and the barbershop? Should we be doing that? That means that our people don't know. Even on Sunday, let's, let, let, let's gamble with it for a minute, and let's say Sunday is the Sabbath day. Do our people still buy, sell, cook, clean? You see how we have lost the knowledge of God? Even though Sunday is not the Sabbath day, most people will say, Sunday my Sabbath day. Right. But you're still breaking it if that was God's day, which is not because you're buying, you're selling. After church, y'all all, they all go to where? Where everybody go out to church? They go eat. How they get the food? They steal it. They pay for it. So even if it was the Sabbath day, they broke the Sabbath day. But that's not the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day is Friday sundown, to Saturday sundown. Do you understand that or is it confusing? From Friday sundown to Saturday sundown is the Sabbath day. God says the ox knows his own as his master crib, but my children Israel, they don't know. Because we have been put into slavery and lost all knowledge. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 15 and verse 20, uh, 28 verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. But it shall come to pass. God said this will come to pass. I want you to look at this sign. Read. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So now we're talking about when Moses brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. He said, if you don't hearken to do these commandments, all these curses are going to come upon thee and overtake thee. Verse 32. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. What did we get? Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. What's that called? Slavery. Why, have not we, why haven't we learned this in church? Now, we go to church, we get a good shuck. The Lord said, and this is your season, and you're going to get reap this reward, and you're going to reap that reward. Give, give, give. Pass collection plate around. Right? Am I lying? Am I telling the truth or am I telling a lie? That's, you, that's what you hear, right? And the Lord, ha, 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 and he said, ha, ha, ha. But they ain't reading none of this right here, though. They ain't reading this. The problem is, and where they have failed us at, they haven't been able to go in the book and show us who we are. 
They have not been able to go in the book and tell us not to break God's commandments. This whole thing that we see going on around us, all of this sin going on around us, is because we continually break God's commandments. We're living in sin. When you look get through, when you look at what's going on around you, you're supposed to see sin. If you're chosen by Christ, if Christ is calling on you, calling you, the same vision that Christ had when he was walking on the Matthew chapter 4 verse 17. That's what you're supposed to see. If you don't see that, that's because you have been blinded. We have yet to be woken up to the spirit of Christ, to the understanding of what this Bible is talking about. Read. Matthew chapter 4 verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to sing. Repent. What did Jesus say? Repent. Come on. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What you see around you is a bunch of brothers and sisters that need to repent. Right. Every day that you walk out of your house and you come out into this world, you have to see sin and understand that our people are in sin and need to repent. It is your duty to learn this Bible, to teach them how to repent. How do you repent? By asking God for forgiveness. Give me that in 1 Kings. You know what I want. I want to show you something, young man. Read. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 46. Bring it out. If they sin against thee. Have we sinned? Yeah, yeah, we sinned. Because look, this happened to us. That's how we know we in sin. We understand what it says, what to do and what not to do on the Sabbath day. So when we look out and we see people doing it, we know that they're in what? They're in sin. We. For there is no man that sinneth not, and that be angry with them. And deliver them to the enemy. So God was angry with us and he delivered us to the enemy. The people that did this to you ain't your friend. Do friends put friends on slave ships? Do friends shoot friends down in the street? No. Now am I calling, hold on, hold that. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse uh, 48, 49, thine enemies. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Therefore, shall thou serve thine enemy. What God said? Thou shalt thou serve thine enemy. Look on the front of your flyer. Read it again. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemy, which the Lord shall sin against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Until he have destroyed thee. Now what you're looking at, Joshua, is the yokes of iron being put on a people's neck. Until is the key word. Until he has destroyed you. Now what is that going into? Until is the biggest point that you need to understand. Because the chains will be on your neck until Joshua don't understand who his God is. The chains will be on your ankles until Joshua don't know what his nationality is. The chains will be on your neck until Joshua teaches his children that he's just a black man, that he's just a nigga, and then that takes place generation after generation after generation after generation, and then until they can take the chains off your neck. Now, why? Because we lost who we were. Now, did they do that on their own? Was it them, was it them that made them do that? They, they thought about this on their own? How did, why did they do that to us? Let's see what the Bible says. Read up. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God huh? to keep his commandment. You see that? All of this happened because we did not keep the commandments. Read and his statutes which he had commanded thee and they shall be upon thee for a sign so the curses were supposed to be upon us for a sign these curses help us identify who the children of israel are anywhere we look into the world we can look at the curses we can look at the sign that god gave us in the bible it would be a sign that these are the children of israel when you look over in uh, in, uh, in, in in the continent of africa and you see a certain group of people being oppressed being put in slavery still, that means what? That they are who? They are the children of Israel. That's the sign. What is the nation?
nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Oh!